Welcome back to the Let's Play of Wario Land. Uh, today we're going to be covering the game's one and only skippable area. Um, well, skippable if you don't care about picking up all the treasures anyway, because there's, there's a couple hidden in there. So let's get right to it. This takes us to Sherbet Land, which just real quick, as a reminder, unlocks from Mount Teapot. Uh, in the last episode, we unlocked this side path, and that's how we get to Sherbet Land. This one is also unique in that you can actually fight the boss multiple times if I recall correctly. And a lot of these bridges fall away as you walk on them. So I might be a little quiet on the commentary because I have to focus. Uh, I can never quite remember which bridges are solid and which ones fall away, so I like to take my time and play a little careful here. Whew, particularly in parts like that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Throw him right off the cliff. Oh, that's just a save point. Okay. That's fine. I'm doing pretty good on lives, so the birds I'm not gonna be too concerned about knocking out for hearts. them as a springboard, Ooh, that was close, then I will. Oh no! <laughs> Shoot, I should have used that save point. Okay, and that's why I'm pretty quiet. Um, <laughs> this level will mess me up a few times, I'm sure. I want to minimize my bungles, just because uh, you guys are here to see the gameplay, not to see me mess up. Although admittedly that may have some entertainment value too. Alright, live and learn. This time, let's do a couple of things. Get some hearts there. Let's put a coin in the halfway point. Well, it's not necessarily a halfway point, it's just a save point. Or a continue point, perhaps, is a little more accurate. I uh, perhaps should not try for that platform. <laughs> I nailed it the first time, but I feel like perhaps I got lucky. All right, no more messing around. Let's let's do this for reals. The nice thing with this save point, halfway point, continue point, etc., is there's a dragon hat right outside of it. So even if you mess up, you get a nice power up right away when you come back. This time, I got it. Last time what happened was I had an enemy in my hand, so when I pushed the button to jump, uh, that's also the button to throw the enemy, which is a B on the controller. So I threw the enemy and did not jump in time. Alright, focus time. Nope, 
I'm not even gonna try those coins. How nice. The door is open for us. In between levels, just gonna take a second to adjust the audio on my side. My headphones are up way too loud. There we go. Okay, no gamble this time. Little bit more adjustment. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, now this area also has a lot of levels with multiple exits, and it doesn't really matter if you get every single one because they end up going in a loop. So I think you can skip at least one, if not two, probably just one of those optional exits or multiple exits. Okay, not there. I know there's a couple places where it looks like this and you can actually jump through the ceiling to get to a secret spot. Grabbing the jet hat may not have been the wisest. Because these bricks now take two hits each. As opposed to one with the bull hat. That's alright though. Aha, one up. Uh, that one up was from getting enough hearts. I'm much more confident in this level, so I'm gonna skip the save point. There's none of those darn bridges to fall off of. Okay, well, this time we're taking the basic exit. I just uh, accidentally, accidentally sealed off the part where we would jump up to get to the other exit by grabbing those coins that were in an odd position. Up ahead, we're going to hit a switch that turns all these ice blocks here into coins. And if we had left some of those coins from earlier, we could have jumped up there to the secret exit. But that's okay, because we have to go through here twice anyway to get both exits. Okay, so it doesn't change the ice blocks into coins. It gets rid of the ice blocks, but it changes any coins that you had left behind into ice blocks. That's what it is. That'll make a little more sense on the next run through. Uh, when I play it a little more carefully, you'll see it in action. No, sir. We're going to go back to that same level again. That's very unfortunate. I wasn't expecting to get get hit by those spines from that angle.
But ultimately, I'm just trying to get through here quickly. So, no big deal. Okay, this is the part where we gotta be careful. What we wanna do is jump and just get the two coins here. Those two. And we need to get most of those, so that should be enough, so that they don't block our way. So I was kind of a weird kid. I think a lot of us were, um, in one way or another. And those ice blocks that block the way on the way to that switch, I kind of thought they were broken teeth. They look a bit like it if you use your imagination. And oh boy, did I have an imagination as a kid. I imagine I still do. Oh, I guess those coins don't actually transform. Oh, and these ones don't either. Okay, that's a detail that I forgot. It just adds ice blocks under the coins, so we can still get them. Oh dear. I thought I would have him uh, knocked out in time to avoid his boomerang, but I guess not. That's quite alright, because we should be pretty much at the end. Just gotta avoid this knife guy, which is pretty easy. May as well get some hearts off of him. Oh boy, that was a little bit nerve-wracking as small Wario. Before we exit, let's go grab this last treasure box, or I guess it's not, a treasure is not the right word since treasure is a separate mechanic in this game. Goody box? Eyes box? Power up box? Something like that. Okay, now we've got both exits. You'll notice this is one of the few levels in this area that has only one. So let's go ahead and do it. Those lightning bolt clouds are invincible, but they have a secret. Let's see if I can do it. I'm not going to spend too much time trying, but if you get lucky or skilled enough to put an enemy underneath one of those lightning bolts, much like a thwomp hitting that enemy, it will turn into 10 coins. there. You gotta be really careful with these guys because they're not quite at the edge when it looks like they are. So if you're gonna bump them from below like I'm doing, you gotta make darn sure they are at the very edge of the platform. that one just in case I need to come back for it. Like that there. If I recall, this is just the save point. 
Oh. No, there's some goodies. Including a treasure key. Okay, wow. I'll be Dragon Wario, why not? The treasure key can be a little annoying in that you can't use your powers such as the jet, the rush, um, stomp, or dragon fire while you're carrying it but it's mighty handy for knocking out enemies. Enemies run into it and die. Um, if you touch enemies with it, they'll get knocked out. Oh, here's the save point. Um, and if you throw it at enemies. There are some exceptions. Those clouds can't be killed by anything as far as I know. Oh, that uh, weird sound was me trying to throw while I was too close something I could not throw the key through. So the trick here is to throw the key, start your power, grab the key. The timing is pretty precise, but if you manage to do that, you'll continue to use your power and pick up the key. That also applies to bull charge and, um, oh gosh. <laughs> Bull charge, etc. <laughs> okay, now I'm actually glad I didn't use the save point this time. Because I wouldn't want to have to backtrack to get the key. Oh, I thought that hedgehog was going to get hit by a lightning bolt. Okay, let's go grab the key again. Super sure that I've got these guys cleared out so that I can just jump down again when I have the key in tow uh, without worrying about bumping one of them and shrinking down to little Wario. Okay. Okay, so you can still stomp with the key. And there's an example of throwing the key to kill an enemy and using the bull rush while the key is in your possession. You know what, this is just the save point. Let's uh, grab a few coins and call it good enough. Okay. Oh, that was too close.
Okay, this time I'm not going to step on the icy tile, because that's what messed me up last time. Okay, our patience has paid off. You don't want to jump too high uh, on that one because there are spikes up above. And if you lose your power up right before you come to this chest, there's no way to claim the treasure. Well, you could use the cheat code where you press start to pause and then hit select 16 times. Give yourself a power up. Okay, now to get back down, just try to stay centered about where the door was, and you'll fall right to the other door. For this bit, just press the right arrow while you jump, and you'll get there. I like to clear out these blocks to give myself some jump space, so I don't have to worry too much about it. As always, just try to avoid those mines trigger them and then get away. If you press a direction in the water while you're floating or swimming, you'll move a little more quickly, but not while you're walking on the floor or ground or whatever have you. All right, 122, that's a pretty decent haul. And we picked up a uh, I don't know what that thing is. A bell, maybe? Letter E. And this leads to one more uh, non-exit. Or non-dual exit. One more single exit. And if you come in here with the jet hat, you can get into this, which is just a nice little secret. Just a quick hundred coins, no big deal. Or, as you just saw, there is a jet power-up available. This should you lose yours, like me. <laughs> there we go. Let's not even bother with that hedgehog. It's too fiddly. Okay, now somewhere in one of these levels, there's a secret ceiling you can walk through. I don't have it memorized, but I know it's here somewhere. That's more or less what I was going for. <laughs> Should I upgrade to the bowl? Hmm. No, because if I recall correctly, this is the boss of the level. I did not recall correctly, okay. You may have noticed right here, there was a spiked log in that block of ice with a duck. That's just a weird little glitch you can do. I don't know precisely how to pull it off. I usually do it uh, unintentionally, um, but it despawns that log for some reason. 
old spaghetti code on the Game Boy, I assume. In fact, let's see, if I go back up there... There it is. That's what it would normally look like. See, that doorway up there should just be a save. Or a continue point, whatever. Yeah, no big deal. Leave that jet just in case I need to come back and pick it up later. Here's the boss. Okay, this guy's pretty easy. What you want to do is wait for him to come over, jump on his head, get back up on the platform. He'll come up with a helmet. Get behind him and tackle. Easiest with the jet hat, I find. Then just make note of where he jumps down, because he'll jump up in the same spot. You don't want to get hit with those spikes. And then just do the same thing one more time. And voila! Definitely a different boss in that there's no coins. Uh, it's a bunch of three ups instead. And if you saw that doorway, you can actually go through that to skip him and just end the level. But uh, I recommend fighting that guy because you get, what was that, like 12 or 15 lives? Okay, uh, we're done with that area, but we haven't unlocked everything. So of course, let's go see what else we can find. Course number 16. This one has two exits, one of which leads to that same boss level that we were just in. Oh, I thought I was going to biff it on that one. And one leads to yet another course. It's really funny to me that if you kill those dudes after they put down their ball, uh, the ball still gets kicked like they were alive to kick it. Let's see, I think it's here. Yeah. Oh, I hate this part. Speaking of biffing it. transparent shield. I don't think that's going to do anyone any good on the battlefield. Although I guess it's only transparent when Wario holds it. 
so it's not gonna do Wario any good on the battlefield. A quick tip on these ice platforms if you're having to jump. If you stop while you jump and fall straight down, you won't slide when you land. Here's the hidden ceiling. They make it pretty obvious with that coin. Now of note is that if you go this way, you can't actually go back. So I think what I want to do, oh, no, you, you just can't go back at all. I was going to go to the other exit, the main non-hidden one, if you will, but we no longer have that option. So, this exit it is. Whoa. Not to make excuses, but uh, I'm used to playing this on an actual Game Boy, so using a hand controller on my computer is a little bit um, challenging at times. treasure. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that bull hat because I'm pretty sure we're getting rid of the power up soon anyway. We'll need the jet hat. Before much longer. I've gone the wrong way for the treasure. I think the trick is that it feels like you should go to the right, as with most platformers of this era. But in fact, if we go to the left, we can now go up. ourselves a nice little secret area. Ooh, gotta be careful here. Well, a little bit careful. Once those things, along with most things in this game, most objects, once, uh, dangerous objects actually I should say, once they've hit a wall and you hear that clonk right there, they're safe as they fall the rest of the way off the screen. It's just a cute little despawn animation at that point. So that's why those ice ball thingies aren't hitting me on the ladder. And that one got to me before it despawned. I don't know if I can actually get this guy to get knocked out. We'll see. Maybe if I stand there. There. I put him in the wall, which confuses the game and knocks him out. Never fear. There is a pot, a garlic pot, so that I can become Big Wario.
Squeeze. And here is treasure number six. A lamp. Don't get too excited, because this is not a magic lamp. Uh, there is one of those in this game, but it's not this. Now then, since I don't have the jet hat, we're going to have to go back through with the switch. Annoying, but not the end of the world by any means. I'm not Wario, so I can't actually get into that. Now I can. Those uh, cracked blocks on the ground there. Or above the door. My goodness. Uh, once again, I'm recording late in the evening, so I'm fairly tired. Not uh, not uh, thinking at 100% capacity. And while that's just the continue point, I like to go into that one because there's a ton of coins. How many was that? Like 16? Pretty darn good for an area that's not too hard to access. Okay, very good. That almost concludes Sherbet Land. <laughs> we do have one more thing to get here. And that's because I'm a completionist. The alternate exit from course 16. Nothing in there now. So if you come back and do a course that used to have a treasure in it after you've claimed the treasure, Unfortunately, the box is just empty where the key used to be. I wish they'd put like a coin in there or something. I don't think we could hear the one-up chime because the sound channels are funky on these old games, but knocking out that last enemy there got me enough hearts for another one-up. So one thing you can do here is you can grab the coin from the side and then hit the box and grab that coin, and you're still safe to move on. The other side, no secret up there. Remember, if we go up through that ceiling, uh, into the hidden area, we cannot come back this way, so you gotta pick your pack pick your path carefully. Almost said picky pick because I'm so used to talking about Pokemon. <laughs> I know I haven't done um, much Pokemon content on this channel yet, but I might someday. I'm not sure what I would do. Goodness, don't know why that was so difficult. We're just gonna skip the rest of these ducks, who cares? Somehow the ducks can live in the spikes, unless you throw them on the spikes. Video game logic. Okay, 
I know it's a little odd to end uh, an episode not after a boss fight, but we already did the boss, and now we're actually at the end of this level. That just connects us into the loop. There were a lot fewer multi-exit levels here than I remember. Um, funny how our memories change in such insignificant ways. Um, and significant ways sometimes too, I suppose. But anyway, that does it for this episode. But you know what? I just realized I'm not sure how I get to the next area from here. Can I? Okay, I can just go this way from the world map. Very good. Okay, let's just take a quick peek to see where we'll be next time. And that is Stove Canyon. Okay, so we have a, a lava world. This is what we'll be covering in the next episode. Um, next week, I think we're going to do a little something different. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise, um, but it will not be Wario Land. We'll be returning to this series the week after that. Uh, yeah, so look forward to it. If you like this video, go ahead and uh, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Um, subscribe if you want to see some more content like this. And uh, leave a comment for me. Let me know what was your favorite level or... Um, one of the comments I received last week was about the sound design. Uh, let me know what you think of the sound on this game. It's really interesting how these old games had to make really good use of the soundtrack. Um, so yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.